A robot with a single depth camera sees the sides of objects, yet there's ambiguity in the full object shape. A shape completion network can generate plausible shapes. As the robot moves, the shapes generated should reflect the new information gained from sensing free space and contacts. Here, after the robot bumps the mug handle, all completed shapes should update to explain the sensed contact. Here is our method illustrated with a simple example. Our robot sees a box from one side, but cannot tell the depth of the box. The visible points are fed to the encoder of a shape completion network trained on boxes. This generates a prior over latent shapes. Sampling from this prior generates diverse, feasible shapes. The robot then moves, sweeping out known free space. Most of the samples are consistent with this new information. However, sometimes we must update the sample to make it feasible. Consider the first term of our loss function, which penalizes overlap between known free space and the completed shape. We backpropagate the gradient of this loss to iteratively update the latent shape vector, repeating until the shape is feasible. As the robot keeps moving, it contacts the box. A robot can detect if it makes contact, but not where precisely the contact was made. The second term of our this loss function captures this information, penalizing shapes that do not occupy at least one of these red voxels. We think of this as projecting sampled shapes onto the contact manifold in the latent space of the shape network. Not all projections succeed. We approximate a belief of the shape using many samples, as in a particle filter. Only the projections that satisfy both the free space and contact constraints contribute to the final belief. The final term of the loss function penalizes latent shapes that deviate from the prior, ensuring that the information from the depth camera is not ignored. Without these terms, shapes can deviate widely from the training data. To apply this on our physical robot, we first segment the scene into distinct objects. For these live examples, the shape completion network was trained on all YCB objects. The shape completion seen here are much noisier than the pure simulation examples. One reason is the live connect noise is different from the training simulated noise model. Also, these network models were trained on the diverse set of YCB objects, rather than being fine-tuned to a specific object or category. While this network has seen a Cheez-It box in training before, it has never seen this exact stack of three boxes together. After the robot contacts the boxes, the completions grow to explain the contact. Because of the shape prior and method structure, the completions do not often have isolated voxels appear to satisfy the constraints, but instead grow into contiguous, albeit blobby, structures. Applying CLASP to the YCB picture, we again find the initial completions capture the rough occupancy, but not the fine details. A network trained specifically to construct a picture could likely do better, but our approach does not require that privileged information. After the robot contacts the picture, the completed shapes grow, filling out the handle region. We envision CLASP used in longer horizon robot tasks where the robot must fill in details, such as the picture handle, before it complete, can complete its task. CLASP also allows a robot to recover from unexpected contact. CLASP allows the robot to use the information, update its belief, and replan. Details and further discussions are available in the